and welcome to our online service today. If I haven't met you, my name is Ken and I'm the lay minister at St Chad's Church in Pattingham. This day is sometimes called Low Sunday, but that's a very unfortunate name because the events that we remember today on that first Sunday after Easter are some of the most dramatic in the New Testament and they bring great hope to us today. So I trust you will enjoy joining us in our worship this morning. We begin with a gathering prayer. So let's pray. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house were locked, Jesus stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Lord, we recognise your presence with us now. We acclaim you as our risen Saviour. May your peace be with us as we worship today. Amen. If you wish, join in the responses in the following prayers. As on that day Christ comes to meet us, bearing the scars on his hands and his side, as to the disciples then, so now Christ gives us his peace and bids us come to him. As in that moment Christ breathes his Spirit on us, to equip us for the work we have to do. Bless us, Lord, for we believe. Amen. And Jesus brought peace to the disciples when he came that day. God's peace be present among us. God's peace be present in the world. God's peace be with us forever. Amen. But we do have to confess that sometimes we get things wrong and quite often we don't get things right. Merciful God, we turn to you in confidence to confess those times when we doubted you. Forgive us and help us. To confess those times when we have hidden from your presence forgive us and help us. To confess those times when we have been hesitant to speak of your glory, forgive us and help us. To confess those times when we have been slow to rejoice in your goodness, forgive us and help us. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We're now going to have our Bible reading for today. And that's going to be read to us by Tracy Williams. Tracy is a member of our congregation at St Chad's and she works in the intensive care unit at New Cross Hospital. So we're very glad that she's been able to do this for us this week. And after she's read, she's agreed to tell us a bit about her work and how she's getting on in this very difficult time in the unit. So we look forward to hearing from her then. John chapter 20 verses 19 to 29 On the evening of that first day of the week when the disciples were together with the doors locked for the fear of the Jewish leaders Jesus came and stood among them and said Peace be with you After he said this he showed them his hands and sighed The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord Again Jesus said Peace be with you as the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, 
Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Thanks be to God. Good morning, Tracy. Um, thank you for doing the reading this morning. We much appreciated that and giving your time to do it. And now we'd just like to ask you a few questions about your life and work in intensive care at New Cross. And firstly, um, how long have you been working in the intensive care unit at New Cross? Okay, morning, Ken. Um, I've actually been there for uh, just over 19 years. I came into nursing quite late. It was a change of career. Um, and I went there as a student as a, on a placement, loved it so much and was lucky to go there straight from qualifying. So I've been there just over 19 years now and as a sister for the last uh, 11 years. That's a long unit. time. You must yeah. have seen huge changes in that length of time in the unit. Absolutely. Um, when I first started, we just had seven beds. Um, uh, those that have been there recently will know that we now have 30 beds on the unit um, divided into general ITU and cardiothoracic ITU. At the moment, we're very much integrated because of the present problems we yeah. have at the moment. Um, I work with an amazing team of over 160 staff. Um, and we have lots of amazing helpers with us at the moment that have come from theatre in the wards that are helping us get through this crisis at the moment. And right. they, they have been absolutely amazing. Right. Yeah. And what is your, your actual role in the unit? How is it defined? Right. Um, I, I um, as a sister, I team lead, um, which means I have a patient as well as look after a team of junior staff. Um, or I can shift lead um, the whole of the general ITU. We're on a, like a rotation basis. Um, so I look after the, the, the patients and look after the team. That's my role. That has changed somewhat right. in recent weeks because um, we obviously have a lot of helpers with us now that have never been in an ITU. Um, the whole situation has changed um, for all of us. And uh, I am, as well as looking after patients, supervising these lovely people that have come um, to help us, as well as our normal team. So it's quite an intense situation at the moment. Right. So you're yeah. doing a lot of training, really, training of people who haven't um, been there. We have, we have an education team. We have a professional development nurse who's doing all the training. Um, and they're absorbing it very quickly. <laughs> um, yes. Bless them. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of training going on. The atmosphere um, is quite intense because obviously we're having to wear all this um, PPE, which is quite uncomfortable, makes communication really difficult um, for each other and obviously with patients as well. So, um, and it's very uncomfortable. Yes. So that's obviously a big difference to what, yes. to what you were doing just a month yes. ago. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think the moment we got our first case confirmed, the whole atmosphere changed. changed. Yeah. And how, how full is the unit running at the moment? Um, as far as I'm aware at the moment, we do have some wiggle room. <laughs> right. um, and we have always had some capacity. Um, so at present we, we are doing holding our own I would say absolutely good good yeah because Wolverhampton, Wolverhampton was quite early on the scene wasn't it yeah. with the virus yeah. and you had yeah, quite, a, quite a lot of deaths early they're not on all, yes um, they're not all on our unit um, and, and yeah. can I just say with regard to those we have always allowed family to um, come in we we, yes. we meet them Great. and we dress them up in all the ppe 
um, and we have allowed one or two members to sit with family um, when the need has arisen. Right, now that raises the question of how your staff are coping with this um, increased intensity, should we say, um, yes. at this time. Um, how are they managing? How are we managing? We, ha we are very supportive of each other. There have been lots of tears. I understand this week we have instigated a wobble room. So <laughs> somewhere we can go for some time out um, right. and just gather our thoughts. Um, we are a very tight knit community um, and we're very supportive of each other and of the new helpers that have come to join us. We're also very well supported by the interfaith chaplaincy team at the hospital who right. are also kitting themselves up to come in and support families and patients as required. Great. So they're, they're being allowed in because some yes. hospitals, I think they haven't let the They haven't. We, we allow one or two, as long as they're not self-isolating themselves, we allow yep. one or two to um, come in. Come in. Yeah. Great. Great. Yeah. So that brings me on to the, the sort of question of, of faith and how that faith affects you or other members of the staff. I mean, does it help? Does it make a Absolutely. difference to you? Um, we have a big family of Filipino nurses who are obviously Catholic. Um, yes. And um, so for myself, and I know for them as well, our faith has been very important. I had a lot of questions at first for him. I've been in a lot of communication, <laughs> <laughs> asking lots of questions. <laughs> However, as the days progressed, um, my faith has given me immense strength. Immense right. strength. Um, when you're wearing all the PPE, you're kind of very insular. Um, so if I'm having an immensely tough day, I can just take myself to a window and have a little word. <laughs> um, and then uh, my prayers at night are getting longer and longer at the moment. But it also brings me immense peace as well. In all the chaos around me, organised chaos I like to have. Yes. Yeah. Um, it brings me immense peace. Well, yes. that's really great to hear. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm sure everybody who hears this will, will appreciate your, your, what you're doing. And we can only support you. And I trust that everybody who is watching the interview, having seen <laughs> it, will then carry on praying for you and supporting you and your team um, in the days I'm of my head. I'm immensely grateful. Immensely grateful. And you're doing the best thing by all staying at home and keeping safe for us. Yes. Okay. So that when this is all over, we can all see each other again at the church, which will be okay. lovely. Well, we'd love to see you again. <laughs> and uh, hopefully, in the not too distant future, hopefully Absolutely. we'll see you back. Absolutely. But thank you, Tracy. Thank you for reading. No, thank, thank you for you. talking to us today. And I hope people, I'm sure people will have enjoyed what you've had to say. And it will give them some insight into what's actually happening day by day. Yeah. So God bless you. And, and you, you can do. take care, everybody. Okay, thank, thank you, you very much. We are now going to affirm together what we believe as Christians. After that, we'll hear from our choir led by Greg, singing as an Easter hymn. And then following that, Philip Sims will lead us in our intercessions as we pray for ourselves and for others. So let's affirm what we believe together. We believe in God the Father, who created the world and all that is in it. We believe in Jesus Christ, his Son, who came to our world as its Saviour. We believe in the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God. This is the faith of all Christians, in all times and places. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again.
Let us pray. Lord, we come before you in strange and uncertain times, a time which is unprecedented and not within our experience. A time of worry for many who are concerned for their health or that of a loved one. Some concern for their job, others struggling with isolation. O oh Lord, take us all in your loving arms, we pray. Soothe our anxieties, calm our fears, and grant us a true sense of your divine presence as we encounter these new challenges and new experiences each day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, may we for a moment give thanks Thanks for the beautiful environment in which we live. Give thanks for our church, not the building, but the people, the friends we miss, the fellowship we crave. At this time, we give thanks for all those engaged in keeping us safe, the emergency services, those ensuring that we have food on our tables, the multitude of people maintaining our vital services but today we think especially of those in the caring professions. Our doctors, our nurses, our care workers, as well as the thousands of people supporting them in their duties. We give particular thanks this morning for our own Tracy Williams, who we have heard from earlier. Tracy, who selflessly each day puts herself in danger who is a true inspiration, and we thank you, Lord, for Tracy, and indeed for all her colleagues. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, it is so easy at times such as this for us to doubt you. Why did you allow this pandemic? Why do you permit such suffering and death? How could you let such a disaster befall so many people? We heard earlier of how Thomas doubted your resurrection, of how he did not believe until he had seen our Lord for himself. He lacked faith. O oh, Father God, do we lack that same faith? Do we have those self-same doubts? Lord, help us to throw off such negative thoughts and just know that it is with you at our side that we shall come through this experience. That you are the same yesterday, today and tomorrow and it is through that certainty that our faith will prevail and we can celebrate our commitment to Christ crucified. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us now commend to God's safekeeping all those who are ill at this time and are known to us. Let us think also of those who have died and all those whose anniversaries fall at this time. Grant them all eternal peace, we pray, and comfort to those who mourn. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, O oh Lord, we pray for ourselves. No matter what issues we face, illuminate us with your light, strengthen us with your power, instruct us with your wisdom, transform us by your grace, and ensure that we never lose our faith in you. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Now let us say the words of the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. 
We use the phrase, seeing is believing, possibly not realising it arises from our reading today from John chapter 20. Thomas was the disciple who asked questions when Jesus was alive. And of course, he missed out on the first appearance of Jesus after he rose in that room where the other disciples were hiding, terrified after the death of their leader. Maybe he was too afraid to be there. Maybe he was too sad, but he missed out on the risen Jesus. So when the others told him what had happened, he could not believe it. It's a perfectly normal human reaction. Jesus had died on the cross. He'd been put in a tomb. A huge stone had been rolled over the door. How could he possibly be alive? I will have to see it for myself, he said. I will have to touch him before I can believe. And so a week later, he gets his chance. And of course, there is no doubt now. He does not even need to touch. When he sees Jesus, he uses these famous words, which in a sense sum up John's gospel, my Lord and my God. The real significance of the story for us, of course, is when Jesus says, you believed because you saw me, many others will believe who will not see me in the flesh. And that's us today, all these years later. We live in an age when people want proof of everything. They want to see before believing. We can't see coronavirus, of course, unless you happen to have an electron microscope. But we still believe it's real because of what it does. So we do need help in believing in the resurrection. We need some clues. We're not asked to believe without any evidence. And there is a great deal of it. And so there are four things I suggest you might like to consider this Easter season as you meditate on the resurrection. Firstly, the empty tomb. If Jesus had not risen, who moved the stone? Who took the body? It could not be the disciples. And why would the Romans or the Jewish authorities possibly want to do it? Secondly, Jesus made numerous appearances to people after he rose. This one shows him appearing to Peter, but he appeared to many other people people as well, and they're well documented. And thirdly, in a few short weeks, these disciples who were hiding terrified in that room were out preaching boldly in Jerusalem, not hiding, but telling everybody about what their experience was of the risen Jesus. They were changed out of all recognition. And fourthly, we have the church. People are still worshipping this risen Jesus 2,000 years later. It's still growing, even if it's not in a building at the moment. Someone has said, if Jesus had just died, no one would ever have heard any more about him. So we can believe without seeing. There's plenty of evidence to help us do that. If you're finding it difficult in these strange times to see where the risen Jesus is in all of this, and it's a challenge to us all, no matter how strong we think our faith is. Have a look round at the evidence of the love of Christ shown in the caring, the healing, the compassion in our own village, in our hospitals, in our care homes, in the wider world generally. There is evidence of a risen Jesus still at work today. And then... Why not use the words Peter used to Jesus when he was alive? Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. As we come to the end of our service this morning, we're going to join in a prayer of praise and thanksgiving, summing up the events that happened on that day all those years ago. Risen Christ, we give you thanks and praise. For the characters in the Easter story, we give you thanks and praise. For the disciples sticking together for reassurance, we give you thanks and praise. For Thomas, who dared to ask for proof, 
we give you thanks and praise. For Mary, who mistook Jesus for the gardener, we give you thanks and praise. For the disciples who failed to recognize you, we give you thanks and praise. For the disciples struggling to catch fish, we give you thanks and praise. For each and every one who has encountered you, yours is the glory. Amen. And we conclude our service with a prayer that we can all take with us into the week that lies ahead with all that that will bring. Christ's peace be with us in all that we do. Christ's peace be with us in all that we are. Christ's peace be with us in all that we will be this day and evermore. Amen. And so may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with us, with those whom we love, wherever they may be, today and always. Amen. Thank you for joining us in our service this morning. We we'll hope to see you again next Sunday. And remember that each morning during the week, Maureen uh, conducts morning prayer. And you're welcome to join us then. And thank you to all those who helped this week, Maureen and Mike for their technical help, and Greg on the choir for singing, and Tracy and Phil for helping with the service too. Thank you.